In Activity 1, Rock and Mineral Properties, students begin by describing the properties of classroom objects and looking for the combination of words that best describes each object. Students then describe and record the properties of each of the rock and mineral specimens in the kit. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 1, Parts A and B, magnifiers, rock and mineral specimens, and the rock guide book. You will also need to provide newspaper. To prepare for the activity, read the rock guide to familiarize yourself with the difference between rocks and minerals and with the names and characteristics of the rocks and minerals included in the specimen bags. For this activity, you'll need to collect enough newspaper to cover the work surface of each group of four students. Make a copy of Activity Sheet 1 for each student. Each group of four students will need one bag of rock and mineral specimens, newspaper, and two magnifiers. Make sure that students wash their hands thoroughly after handling all rock and mineral specimens, especially galena, which is a naturally occurring lead compound. To begin the activity, ask students, how would you describe an object? What kinds of words are used to describe an object? Students should mention that people use their senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing to describe different properties of an object. Then ask, when you describe an object, what are some characteristics or properties of that object that you might name? Students should name a number of characteristics, such as color, shape, size, weight, smell, taste, texture, and the sound the object makes. Next, have a student choose an object in the classroom and describe some properties of that object without telling the class what the object is. The class should try to guess the object that is being described. Try to keep the discussion focused on the physical properties of the object rather than how the object is used. Ask students to describe the objects as heavy or light, smooth or rough, or shiny or dull. You should continue the guessing game until students are comfortable using properties to describe objects. Next, divide the class into groups of four and have the students cover their work areas with newspaper. Distribute one bag of rock and mineral specimens and two magnifiers to each group. Make sure students do not remove the small round labels on each specimen as these labels are used to identify the specimens. At this point, do not divulge the names of the specimens or which ones are rocks and which are minerals. The object of this activity is for the students to simply observe and compare the properties of the samples. Then, remind students that they should never taste anything in science class unless you specifically instruct them to do so. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 1, Parts A and B, to each student and explain that in this activity, they should use all of their senses, except taste, to study the rock and mineral specimens in the bag. Students should observe the specimens both with and without the magnifiers, taking note of visual details such as color, shape, and surface texture. Then, instruct students to pick up each specimen and use their sense of touch to study the size, shape, texture, and relative weight, a familiar size term, of each specimen. Since all samples are approximately the same size, Students are actually comparing the densities, or mass per unit volume, of the samples. Next, have the students sniff each specimen and describe its odor, if any. Tell students to record their observations on Activity Sheet 1. Then, encourage a class discussion by describing the difference between a rock and a mineral. Inform students that a mineral is a non-living, solid substance found in nature. A mineral is not man-made and has the same chemical makeup and structure no matter where it is found. For example, mica found in Alabama has the same chemical makeup and physical structure as mica found in Colorado. A rock, on the other hand, is made of more than one material and may contain several kinds of minerals as well as other materials. Invite students to look at specimen 11 and ask, do you see more than one type of material in this specimen? Do you think it is a rock or a mineral? Students should note that there are distinctly different components to this specimen and infer that it is a rock. Next, invite students to examine specimens one and five. Ask students, do you think these two specimens are rocks or minerals? Help students realize that these specimens are made of the same material throughout, so students should infer that they are minerals. Direct students' attention to specimen 24. This rock contains fossilized remains of gastropods, 
a type of snail. Introduce a class discussion by explaining that a fossil is evidence of an organism that lived a long time ago and is preserved in rock. Fossils can be formed from animal tracks or droppings, skeletal remains, the outline or imprint of an organism preserved in rock, or the organism itself preserved in resin. Inform students that in the next activity, they will be placing evidence of life inside rocks. Then, ask them to bring to class an item to be fossilized in rock. Appropriate items to use are a piece of a leaf, a shell, a feather, or anything once living that could become a fossil 1,000 years from now. Finally, instruct students to start two lists, one of the different ways that rocks and minerals are used today, and one showing how rocks and minerals have been used in the past. Suggest that they categorize according to application, for example, tools, shelter, defense, art and decoration, and so on. The purpose of these lists is to focus the student's attention on the specific properties of rocks and minerals, and to learn what makes some types of rocks and minerals more suitable than others for a certain application. Each student will add to his or her lists throughout the module and will use the lists to complete Activity 11. To conclude the activity, students should place the rock and mineral specimens and magnifiers back in their plastic bags before returning them to the kit. The newspaper should be saved for use in Activity 2. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.